हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू नेचर एकेडमी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर शेख अहमद और फिजिक्स फैकल्टी सो इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द ब्लैक बॉडी रेडिएशन प्रॉपर्टीज इन द सेकंड लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द फोटोइलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट नाउ दिस इज आवर थर्ड लेक्चर इन थर्ड लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस कॉम्प्टन इफेक्ट द ब्लैक बॉडी रेडिएशन फोटोइलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट एंड कॉम्प्टन इफेक्ट gave direct confirmation of the particle nature of radiation and there is one more effect that is known as pair production confirms the particle nature of radiation so we will discuss pair production pair annihilation in the next class okay in this lecture we are going to discuss what is compton effect and uh, what are the significant what is the significance of this compton effect we will discuss here so let us start with the definition of compton effect by scattering monochromatic x rays so x rays are nothing but photons by scattering monochromatic x rays of free electrons the wavelength of the scattered radiation is larger than the wavelength of incident radiation so this is the statement of compton effect compton in 1923 he gave he did an experiment and he said that the scattered radiation has more wavelength compared with the incident radiation or the frequency of scattered radiation is less when compared with the frequency of the incident radiation so look at the diagram in this diagram we have an incident photon whose energy is h nu and the momentum is p bar and the electron is at rest this incident photon what are the photons here the x rays are photons and they are monochromatic x rays monochromatic means nothing but single wavelength so when monochromatic photons incident on rest electrons the electron will recoil in this direction and the photon will scatter in this direction so this is like one to one uh, collision or head on collision i can say elastic collision so electron is at rest so at the rest position what is the momentum of the electron i can say the momentum of the electron is zero at the initial position so then the scattered photon will have another energy e prime it is h nu prime and another momentum p prime so i will write the scattered momentum as like this and momentum is a vector so i can write p bar also p prime bar and the wavelength of scattered wave is the wavelength of scattered photon is lambda prime and the wavelength of incident photon is lambda then compton said that lambda prime is always greater than lambda so this is his conclusion here we should focus on the problem solving techniques and shortcuts to solve the numericals given in competitive exams like csr and gate so that's what i am not going through the theory so i will give few hints which are important and after that i will go to the i will jump to the final expression so i try to write the parameters before collision and after collision so what are the parameters here energy and momentum so let us try to write all these things and after that we can just simply apply the law of conservation of energy and law of conservation of momentum then you will get the final expression so what is the energy of photon before collision so i told you that e is equal to h nu is the energy of photon so i will write e is the energy of the photon if you want you can write h nu also before collision and what happens after collision after collision the energy of photon is e prime so i will write the energy of scattered photon is h nu prime next we have electron here before collision the electron is at rest so they it will have some rest energy so the rest energy is mec square after collision the electron will get a recoil so it will have some recoil energy and e e so the recoiling energy is i can also call it as kinetic energy of the electron this is e e and here you have to apply the relativistic mechanics you should remember one thing the kinetic energy of the electron is not just simply like m e c square something like that you have to apply relativistic mechanics how e is related with momentum and that is p square e square momentum of the electron e square e square plus m e square c power 4 i hope you remember this formula because the incident energy of the photon is very very large when compared with the 
rest mass energy of the electron since we are using x rays so x rays are more energetic so the x rays when scattered with the electron electron will get high energy and they will move with the velocity of light next what is the momentum of the photon i can write simply the momentum of photon is p bar or you can write e by c also you can write or you can also write h nu by c the momentum of photon before collision and what is the momentum of the photon after collision that is scattered photon i can write this is e prime by c and if you want you can write h nu prime by c next what is the momentum of electron before collision before collision the electron is at rest so momentum is zero after collision the electron have some momentum so it is pe bar if you know these parameters then it is very easy to uh, derive the expression for the uh, wavelength difference so here you have to apply two things one is law of conservation of energy so what is law of conservation of energy that energy before collision must be equals to the energy after collision right another thing the law of conservation of momentum momentum before collision is equals to momentum after collision for example apply the law of conservation of energy here so before collision i have the energy values like this h nu plus mec square before collision and after collision you can see here this thing i can write h nu prime plus under root so whatever the relativistic parameter p square c square and this is electron momentum and you will get mv square c power 4 so this is one equation similarly you apply second second formula what is the second thing the law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of momentum so apply the law of conservation of momentum before collision and after collision momentum must be equal so before collision we have here so h nu by c is there plus zero is there the zero is the momentum of the rest electron and on the other side you have h nu prime by c and momentum of the electron okay p e bar so by from equation one and two it is very easy to derive the expression for delta lambda delta lambda is nothing but lambda prime minus lambda c so i am uh, i am giving it as an assignment to you you can do it on your own so this is the theory and what is the final expression here so look at the final expression the change in the wavelength that is represented by lambda prime minus lambda is derived as h by mec 1 minus cos theta so lambda prime is the scattered photon wavelength and lambda is the incident photon wavelength so lambda prime minus lambda is h by mec 1 minus cos theta now i want to discuss the intensity and scattering angle as a function of lambda so for this i have taken the diagram again now if i keep a detector at this place so i am using a detector to find the scattered radiation so you should remember one thing the theta is the angle of scattering and phi is the angle of recoiling of the electron when theta is equal to zero what do you mean by theta is equal to zero the photon will scatter along the x-axis so here i am going to draw the graph between intensity and wavelength so intensity of the scattered radiation and the wave wavelength lambda as a function of theta if theta is equal to zero that means the photon is scattered along the x-axis then you will get a peak like this okay so what is the peak value here i can say this is let me call it is lambda okay La lambda you cannot lambda not also you can write if you change the position of the detector that means now theta is 45 degrees so photon is scattered in this direction so the display uh, the detector is placed at an angle 45 degrees then compton observed that one peak here and there is another side peak here so one peak is here and this is lambda itself and the second peak he observed that this is lambda prime so this is for theta is equals to 45 degrees and the difference between these two gaps is delta lambda next if you keep the detector at this place then what is the angle theta now the theta is 90 degrees then compton observed that the intensity and lambda here he of the compton observed that he got a peak at the same place of lambda and there is a dip in the peak second peak 
so this is at lambda and this peak is at lambda prime so the difference the gap between here and here is delta lambda so this is for theta is equals to 90 if you further increase the angle of scattering that means if i keep the detector here so this is my detector and if the photon is scattered in this direction assume that the theta is 135 degrees theta is 135 degrees so lambda and this is intensity then he got one peak at this place another peak like this so this is lambda and this is lambda prime so this is for 135 degrees angle so from these diagrams you can see that the difference between two peaks the first peak and second peak is Compton shift lambda prime minus lambda for different angles different peaks are there and the lambda prime value is increasing with respect to the theta so what is this first peak and what is the second peak we will discuss here okay the first peak occurs at almost the same wavelength of the incident frequency so if the incident wave has incident photon as this wavelength right so incident wave and this incident wave has some wavelength lambda when along the x-axis that means theta is equal to 0 degrees we get the same peak that means the photon is not scattered by any electron it may be scattered by an atom okay so the first peak is due to the scattering of photon by the complete atom not by single electron in Compton experiment Compton has taken a graphite material so when he scanned the radiation across 135 degrees so he observed this type of pattern the second peak is due to Compton shift the first peak is due to the primary peak is due to uh, the scattering by the atom okay so this is about the intensity for different theta values so next these are the important points very very important points about Compton effect the first point is Compton effect provided the most conclusive confirmation of the particle aspect of radiation so second point delta lambda depends only on theta next Compton effect well exhibited with shorter wavelengths only for example x-rays with lambda less than 1 or lambda less than or equals to 1 angstrom and for gamma rays with lambda is less than 1 angstrom gamma rays with lambda less than 0.1 angstrom so x-ray have this much wavelength and gamma rays have this much wavelength Compton shift can't be absorbed with visible light okay for theta is equals to 0 degrees we will we'll get delta lambda is equal to 0 theta is equal to 180 degrees we will get delta lambda is equal to maximum I will try to write here so what is the formula here students delta lambda is equal to h by m naught c or h by m e c so this is the formula into 1 minus cos theta when theta is equal to 0 what is the delta lambda value delta lambda is cos 0 is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so 0 so this is delta lambda minimum next when theta is equal to 90 degrees what is delta lambda value cos 90 is 0 so you'll get h by mec so h by mec nothing but lambda c compton wavelength and i will take another one 180 degrees so when theta is 180 degrees this is known as back scattering back scattering of photon the photon is scattered by the electron in the opposite direction in this case the electron will get maximum kinetic energy electron will get maximum kinetic energy from the photon and the photon will backscatter so when theta is equal to 180 degrees what happens to lambda cos 180 is minus 1 so 1 minus of minus 1 is 2 so you will get 2h me c so this is 2h this is 2 lambda c so in the back scattering cases delta lambda is two times of compton shift lambda lambda c is known as compton wavelength delta lambda is compton shift okay so these are the values here so i can draw all these things in a graph so let us look at all these parameters in a graph mode yes here you can see it. delta lambda as a function of theta is drawn here when theta is equal to 90 degrees, cos 90 is what? 0. So you will get lambda c only. When theta is equal to 180 degrees, so this is back scattering. So you remember this one. Back scattering plays very, very important role in uh, many other applications. 
so this is backscattering at the backscattering you will get to lambda hc so this is the place where the kinetic energy of electron kinetic energy of electron is maximum okay you remember this thing the kinetic energy of electron is maximum when theta is equal to 180 degrees when theta is equal to 270 degrees again you will get lambda c and when theta is equal to 360 degrees you will get lambda c is zero so you you can get this type of questions in your exams particularly in gate and other tafr or test exams okay in iit jam also next if incident photon so i am talking about this one last point in this slide if incident photon of if incident photon wavelength is equal to Compton wavelength, for example, incident photon wavelength is lambda and Compton wavelength is lambda c, then photon's energy E is equal to rest mass of energy. So what he is saying then photon's energy E is equal to rest mass of the electron. So let us prove this one here. So in the next slide, I am going to derive this expression E is equal to mc. Now I am trying to uh, show that uh, I'm trying to show that E is equals to M, M e c squared. Okay, if lambda is equals to lam lambda c, let us write the formulas. What is lambda? I can write lambda is hc by e, right? Since E is equals to hc by lambda, I can write lambda is equals to hc by e. And what is lambda c here? So this is h by M e c rest mass M e, you can write M naught also, M e c. So from this, cancel HS on both sides. And what will you get? C here and E here. And we have 1 by M e c here. So cross multiply, you will get E is equals to M e c square. Okay. So this type of questions you may, you may, you may get in your entrance examinations. So the condition is lambda c is equals to lambda is equals to lambda c. If the incident photon energy equals to rest mass of electron, rest energy of an electron, then what is the, which of the following statement is correct? One thing will be lambda less than lambda c. Second one will be lambda greater than lambda c. Third one will be lambda is equals to lambda c. And fourth one will be lambda is equals to 2 lambda c. Okay, in, in this case, you have to do the reverse operation. Substitute E is equals to HC by lambda. And, and you can also write M e square here. So cal uh, cancel on the both sides, you will get lambda is equals to lambda C. Okay, you have to do, you have to do small uh, uh, rearrangement of the terms, then you will get things. So this is also important thing. Right. So now moving on to the next problem. Uh, in a Compton scattering process, photon of wavelength lambda is scattered of a charged particle of mass m initially at rest by an angle theta. If the final wavelength of the photon is lambda prime, then the difference lambda prime minus lambda. So you know the formula, right? Delta lambda is equals to lambda prime minus lambda. So what is the formula here? So this is h by so 1 minus cos theta. So in this problem, he did not mention the given particle is electron or proton, something like that. He simply said that the charged particle of mass m, that's why I wrote h by mc into 1 minus cos theta. Okay, now look at the expression delta lambda depends upon, h is a constant, so it won't depend on h, c is a constant, so you can remove this one. It depends upon theta only. So look at the options here. First option is, it depends on theta, but not on lambda. What is asking in a Compton scattering process? So lambda is there, lambda prime is there. Then the difference lambda prime and lambda it depends on theta, but not on lambda. So it depends on theta, but not on lambda. This is correct. Depends on lambda, but not on theta. So this is wrong. Depends on both theta and lambda. No, this is wrong. Depends on theta. Okay, it depends on theta, but not on m. So you should remember this thing. He is saying that depends on theta, correct, the depends on theta is correct, but it does not, the difference does not depend on m, he is saying that, but there is an m dif dependence, okay, so this is also wrong. If it, if we, if we write like this, uh, the difference depends on theta and on m also, then this will be the correct answer, okay, but from these four options, option A is the correct one, okay, 
right so moving to the next problem uh, this is gate 2003 problem which one of the following statements concerning the Compton effect is not correct so you have to select the wrong statement here the option a look at the option a the wavelength of the scattered photon lambda prime okay is greater than or equal to the wavelength of the incident photon yes it is always greater than uh, and when delta lambda is equal to zero uh, then what will you write delta lambda is equal to zero means lambda prime minus lambda is equal to zero so in some cases lambda prime is equal to lambda so this is unscattered photon case if the photon is not scattered by any charged particle the incident wavelength and scattered wavelength will be same okay so equal to also holds good here so this is the correct statement only next we, we are here we are looking for the incorrect statement the energy of the incident photon h nu is equals to the energy of the scattered photon h nu prime plus kinetic energy of the electron so kinetic energy of the electron so this is also correct according to law of conservation of energy h nu is equal to h nu plus k this is also correct the electron can acquire kinetic energy equal to the energy of the incident photon electron can acquire kinetic energy equal to the energy of the incident photon so this is wrong this is wrong why it is wrong i will show in the next slide so there is a proof for this one there is a problem from this problem i can show that the energy of the incident photon is half of the kinetic energy of the electron that thing we are going to solve okay what about the fourth one the kinetic energy acquired by the electron is the largest when the incident and the scattered photons move in opposite direction so this is when theta is equals to phi i already told you that this is back scattering in back scattering in back scattering process the maximum kinetic energy will be transferred to the electron so in that case the kinetic energy will be maximum this is also correct so which one of the following statement is wrong so option c is the wrong so you have to select the option c next so what is the uh, the compton wavelength of proton is approximately so this is gate 2017 this is very very simple so you know the compton wavelength formula lambda c is compton wavelength that is h by m not c m e c or m p c so since we have the proton here we should write m p c compton wavelength is lambda c compton shift is delta lambda what is delta lambda this is shift shift change in the values of lambda compton shift is delta lambda and compton wavelength is lambda c so h by m p c substitute the values of h 6.624 or 6.626 10 power minus 34 joule second so this is Planck's constant divided by what is the mass of the proton mass of the proton is 1.67 into 10 power minus 31 sorry 10 power minus 27 kg and what is the velocity of light 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second i hope you got the answer the answer is 1.32 into 10 power minus 13 centimeters so this is the Compton shift of a proton. Yes. Next, moving on to the th important thing. Show that the maximum kinetic energy transferred to an electron when hit by a photon of energy H nu is H nu by 1 plus mec square by 2 H nu. So you have to prove this one. From this one, I can I can give some shortcuts. To find the energy of the electron the energy of the scattered electron photon if you know one thing if you know the energy of the incident photon you can easily calculate kinetic energy of electron and for uh, scattered energy of the photon for this you have to prove this e is equal to h nu by 1 plus m is e squared by 2 h nu so let us start from here what is the formula delta lambda is equals to you know the formula right h by m e c 1 minus cos theta right and he is saying that show that the maximum kinetic energy is transferred to an electron the maximum kinetic energy is transferred to an electron when theta is equals to pi what is delta lambda it is lambda prime minus lambda is equals to h by mec and 1 minus cos theta will become 1 minus cos 180 
180 degrees so as a result you will get 2h by mec so this is lambda prime minus lambda now lambda prime can be written as c by nu prime lambda can be written as c by nu which is equals to 2h by mec and take c on the right side and h in the left side so what will you get 1 by h nu prime minus 1 by h nu is equals to 2 by me c square so here just i have rearranged the terms okay so i can write 1 by h nu I, I will keep 1 by h nu on the left side and i will take 1 by h nu i will keep 1 by h nu prime on the left side and i will take 1 by h nu on the right side which is equals to 2 by me c square right so let us take the lcm on this side so what will be the lcm on the rhs so h nu into me c square is lcm so here i will get me c square and this will be 2 h nu simply so just write down on h nu prime so you have to uh, change the fraction here so it will become h nu into m e square divided by m e square the rest mass energy of the electron into 2 h nu so i take m e square m e c square common so what will you get here h nu is there here you will get 1 and plus 2 h nu in the denominator you will get m e c square so this is another important thing h nu prime is what e prime energy of the scattered photon is directly related to h nu is what energy of the incident photon divided by an expression like this 1 by 2 h nu divided by m e c square so keep in mind this is one formula so you can also write e here instead of writing 2 h nu you can also write 2 e okay so e by 1 plus 2 e by m e c square if it is an electron the rest mass energy m e c, m e c square for electron is 0 0.51 million electron volts if it is proton the rest mass of proton is 938 million electron volts so if you know the incident energy then it is easy to calculate the scattered energy since m e c square is a known value okay so but here we have derived the scattered energy in terms of incident energy but the given question is we have to find the maximum kinetic energy so i will write here so what we got h nu prime is equals to h nu divided by 1 plus uh, 1 plus 2 h nu by m e c square so what is the relation what is the energy of the kinetic what is the kinetic energy of the electron kinetic energy of the electron is nothing but incident energy minus scattered energy so i can also call this kinetic energy of the electron as the loss of energy when you incident photon of energy h nu on an electron the photon gets scattered with an energy h nu prime so whatever be the energy loss of the energy loss during this collision is gained by the electron and that can be considered as kinetic energy so substitute here here h nu is there and h nu prime i am writing h nu prime value here 1 plus 2 h nu by m e c square so you can take the you can use the cross multiplication or i will write the lcm here so you will get m e c square plus 2 h nu and m e c square go to the numerator like this okay you can also write like this okay take h nu outside so 1 minus here we have m e c square m e c square 2 h nu is there take the lcm so here you will get m e c square plus 2 h nu minus m e c square divided by m e c square plus 2 h nu okay so m e c square m e c square get cancelled here and here so you are left with h nu into 2 h nu divided by 
me c square plus 2h nu so take 2h nu common so numerator will be h nu and here 2 is going there right so i let 1 here this is 1 and it will become me c square by 2h nu therefore i can say that the kinetic energy of the electron is h nu by 1 plus the rest mass of the electron divided by 2 h nu so this is very very important thing from this expression you can directly calculate the kinetic energy of the electron the maximum kinetic energy of the electron you can also calculate the maximum kinetic energy of the proton you can also calculate the energy of the scattered photon you can also calculate the scattered wavelength frequency from these expressions for example uh, there is one question show that the maximum kinetic energy transferred to a proton when hit by a photon of energy h nu is given by mpc square that's it you just replace the mass of electron with mass of proton then the energy expression is same even you can take any other particle single particle then you just replace the rest mass of electron with rest mass of that particle then you will get maximum kinetic energy Okay, there is another problem. This is also a very, very important problem. High energy gamma rays are scattered from electrons initially at rest. Assume that the photons are back scattered. Just write theta is, theta is equals to pi here. And their energies are much larger than electrons rest mass energy. That means photon energy is great, very, very greater than rest mass energy of the electron. Calculate wavelength shift. Show that the energy of the scattered photon is half of the rest mass energy of the electron. So we will work on the second part later. First, uh, try to solve the first one. What is Compton wavelength shift? Delta lambda is equal to H by MEC. Since here is given electrons, right? So I can write MEC into 1 minus cos theta. Cos theta is how much? 180 degrees. So you simply will get 2H by MEC. So what is the maximum value of 2H by MEC? It's approximately 0.0485 angstroms that's it when you substitute all these things you will get this value it's over now moving to the second one show that the energy of the photon energy of the photon is e e is half the rest mass energy of the electron what is the rest mass energy of the electron mec square is the rest mass energy of the electron divided by two so this one we have to prove first of all write down the expression what is the energy of the scattered photon what is the energy of the scattered photon? Just now we have derived that one. H nu prime is equals to H nu by 1 plus 2 H nu by mec square. This is the formula. If you write in terms of energy, E prime is equals to E by 1 plus 2 H nu or 1 plus 2 E by mec square. But the condition is here is given that E is very very more than MEC square. So now how will you prove that E prime is equals to half ME square. Okay. So here E prime is use the find the LCM here. So you will get MEC square and this is 2E divided by MEC square here this mec square will go to the numerator e into mec square divided by mec square plus 2e what is the condition e is very very larger than mec square e is very very larger than mec square then i can ignore this one i can take this as zero when compared with larger e so e prime becomes e into mec square divided by 2 into e so e will get cancelled you will get mec square by 2 therefore i can say that the energy of the scattered photon is half of the rest mass energy of the electron so rest mass energy of the electron is this one regardless of the energy of the incident photon whatever be the energy of the incident photon it may be 3 k 3 kilo electron was 3 kV, 4 kV or whatever be the energy of the incident photon regardless of the incident of the photon the scattered photon's energy is half of the rest mass energy of the electron 
sometimes you will get a direct question as a statement so these are very very important problems for your CSR and TAFR exams I hope you understood this problem and next there is another simple problem uh, I, I will give some hints and you can do it on your own I am not going to spend much time on this one a photon of energy E is given simply write down what are the given parameters 3 kilo electron volts is given elastically with electron at rest if the photon emerges at an angle theta is also given 60 degrees find the kinetic energy of recoiling electron so kinetic energy of the electron you can write EE as incident energy minus scattered energy you can easily calculate this one how will you calculate incident energy is hc by lambda and scattered energy is hc by lambda prime so i am giving some hints here take hc outside so if you take the lcm it will be like l lambda prime minus lambda by lambda into lambda prime so i can write hc by lambda as h nu and lambda prime minus lambda as delta lambda divided by lambda prime we'll have here so delta lambda is Delta lambda can be calculated by the formula H by MEC into 1 minus cos 60 degrees here. You substitute lambda value, you substitute theta value, you will get delta lambda here simply. Right? And you know the energy value E is 3 kil, kilo volts, which is nothing but HC by lambda. From this, you can calculate lambda simply HC by 3 kilo electron volts. Substitute these values, you will get lambda here. Delta lambda you will get here. So delta lambda is there, lambda is there. If you know delta lambda and lambda, so lambda prime minus lambda is equals to delta lambda. You can also calculate lambda prime as lambda plus delta lambda. So from 1, you can calculate delta lambda. From 2, you can calculate lambda. Substitute here, you will get lambda prime also. Now substitute all the values in this expression. Let us say this is equation A. Delta lambda, lambda prime, you will get kinetic energy of the electron. So this is one way to do this one. So the second part is very very important, the recoiling angle. Sometimes in your competitive exam, they will ask you simply calculate the angle at which the electron recoils. That means you have to find phi. So for this, I have to apply the law of conservation of momentum particularly. So let us write uh, what is the components, what are the momentum components along x-axis and what are the momentum components along y-axis. So along x-axis, I will start with along x-axis along x-axis so when we have phi here and this is the momentum of the electron so this is just like x-axis and y-axis and you have a vector like this so the horizontal component of the vector along x-axis that is pe cos phi plus we have theta here and p prime is the momentum of the scattered photon so this will also have horizontal component on x-axis that is p prime sin theta sorry this is not cos theta this is not sin theta this is cos theta this is also cos theta so this is after collision before collision we have only one momentum that is along x-axis the momentum of the photon is along the x direction we don't have any uh, y component so simply i can write p and electron is at rest so we don't have any electron component here so this is equation one now along y-axis, write down the momentum conservation principle along y-axis. Momentum of the electron PE on y-axis will have PE sin phi. This is horizontal vertical component of this electron. And the scattered photon will also have a vertical component which is P prime sin theta with a minus because it is along negative y direction so whereas this one momentum of electron the and vertical component of momentum so this is p sin theta so i will write this is p prime sin theta which is equals to zero electron anyhow before collision electron before collision electron momentum is zero and there is no y component of the momentum of the photon so that's what i have written this is zero so this is equation two so from this equation I can write PE sin theta is equals to or PE sin phi is equals to P prime sin theta and from this expression 1 from equation 1 what we can write we can write PE cos phi 
So I am trying to arrange sin phi cos phi on left side and other terms on right side because sin phi by cos phi will give me the tan phi value. That's what I am separating the terms. P sin phi is given P prime sin theta and here P cos phi is equal to P minus P prime cos theta. This is from equation 2. So let me call this is equation 3 and this one is equation 4. So I'll write equation 3 by 4. What will you get? 3 by 4 will simply nothing but tan phi okay 3 by 4 is what p e sin phi by p e cos phi that is tan phi is equals to here p sin p prime sin theta divided by p minus p prime cos theta sin tan phi is equals to p prime sin theta by p minus p prime cos theta what we got tan phi is equals to p prime sin theta divided by p minus p prime cos theta. this is the term uh, we got so remove take the p prime common here so in the numerator we have p prime time so if you take p prime here outside this will become p by p prime minus cos theta so p prime p prime will get cancelled and i can write this as sin theta p is what momentum Momentum P can be written as E by C, E is H nu by C, I can write H nu by C and P prime can be written as H nu prime by C. So just write down here, H nu by C is there divided by H nu prime by C is also there minus cos theta. So now H nu, HHCC get cancelled at final stage you will get sin theta divided by nu by nu prime minus cos theta so this is tan phi therefore i can write phi is equals to tan inverse of sin theta nu by nu prime minus cos theta okay students i hope you understand this one so my suggestion is you, you please practice at your home before going to the exam any exam you just remember some formulas like this they are very easy to remember then you can easily solve the questions in the exams thank you for your cooperation bye